Hi, welcome back to my shop, or my new shop that is. This is my shop line and training coffee, and she's gonna accompany me today while I start a restoration on my new to me 12 inch Atlas Craftman lathe. What do you think, coffee? So I picked up this lathe off Facebook Marketplace for a really good deal, and overall it's in okay condition for what it is. But it does have some minor problems that we're gonna to need to fix, and we're also gonna give it a full cosmetic update just to clean it up and make sure that it can provide many more years of good service. Let's get started. I brought you in a little closer here and let's start talking about the good. First thing, the ways look in pretty good condition. Now on this lathe, the ways were just ground in at the factory and they were never scraped because again, this is a home gamer type machine. It's not a uh, industrial lathe. So for what it was when these were made, Atlas Craftsman decided that just grinding in the ways was good enough. And they show a little wear, but nothing too much, nothing you can cut your fingernail on. I haven't run an indicator across it, but for what I'm gonna be doing with this lathe, it should be just fine. Other thing that's good, all our hand wheels and cranks are fully functional. The tailstock is in good shape. Everything works really smoothly, and all the gears are in good condition. Nothing has chipped teeth, uh, so that works great. The quick change gearbox works fine. And I'll turn on the lathe in just a minute to show you it operating. Um, the motor works great. It's the original motor, uh, counter shaft, belt tension adjustment. Everything works as it should. Uh, but now let's get into some of the things we're gonna need to fix as we go along with this restoration and revival. So here on the spindle is gonna be our number one problem for getting this lathe back up to normal running condition. In the back you can see the counter shaft that is powered by the motor and then you have your pulleys to change your speeds that go up here to the spindle. This gear here is what is supposed to be attached to the pulleys and then will engage the back gear which is down below it when you engage the back gear. Unfortunately that gear has broken off of the pulleys and these gears are made of Zamic. It's a zinc uh, aluminum, magnesium, and some other stuff, oh, copper uh, alloy. And if you maintain them well, they hold up pretty well, but they can be fragile uh, compared to other like steel gears. And as you can see, it's snapped off because it's not supposed to spin freely like this. I was able to source a pulley and gear assembly off eBay, and I have that in hand. So what we'll do is part of the restoration, we're gonna remove the spindle, take this old pulley gear assembly off and replace it with my replacement parts. And that will make it so right now we can only use the lathe and direct drive, but once we replace this part, we'll be able to run it in back gear, which will be good for operations where we need to run the lathe very slowly. The next thing that I plan on fixing during the restoration isn't really a requirement for the projects that I'm gonna be doing. The lathe will work just fine as it is, but the lead screw here for threading operations is pretty severely worn in the middle. Over here on the left, you can see it's a good Acme thread. And up here by the headstock, this isn't engaged very frequently, so this is the original factory threading. As you get down here to the middle where the carriage traveled a lot, it's worn down and you see it goes from kind of a square thread form to it almost looks like a thread form that you would find on a commercial bolt. It's a very sharp like triangular tooth. And then if I move the carriage, actually it won't be in frame, but down at the other end, down here where it wasn't used very much, it's the good Acme thread. This is a three quarter inch uh, part. And so my plan is I've ordered some three quarter inch Acme rod and turning it down to make a replacement lead screw because you can find used lead screws, but they kind of all had the same problem that I found. They're all worn out. Uh, so the only way to get a functional replacement is to make one. And my plan is to use Acme Rod for that. If you have any better suggestions, let me know. But again, I'm gonna have to use this lathe in its current condition to turn down the new lead screw. But again, we're only gonna be turning it down for where it engages the quick change gearbox. So it should be a pretty simple operation. Another thing we're going to do is this is the half nut that engages the lead screw that we were just talking about, or the half nut lever that closes the half nuts back behind the apron. 
If the lead screw is this worn, I guarantee you the half nuts back behind it are worn too. And the half nuts are supposed to be changed out ever so often because ideally they should wear out instead of the lead screw. But it's apparent that this lead screw was never oiled or greased properly and that could have led to the wear. So we'll replace the half nuts. And then it's possible that we might even make a new lead screw for the cross slide and we'll replace the nut that that engages uh, because the threads are have the same issue on the cross slide, they're kind of worn out. And then on the compound, the threads look good, but again, those cross, uh, the nut that it engages are meant to be replaced, so I do have a replacement nut for that. So those are the major functional things we need to fix. Again, we've got to fix the pulley assembly with the back gear, or the gear that drives the back gear. We're going to change out the lead screw for the carriage, the cross slide, the half nuts, nut, and the nut on the compound. And then also we're going to build a new bench. This is a wooden bench with steel legs, and it's just not sturdy enough for this lathe. It flexes, and for a lathe to operate at its maximum capabilities, you really need to make sure it's leveled properly. So we're going to weld a steel bench that we can bolt down to the floor, and then we can level the lathe properly on that and make sure the lathe is bolted down. As I receive this lathe, it's currently only bolted down in two spots. I believe one there and then one back here. It's not even bolted down in the other two positions. So again, you could turn light materials on this, but you're not gonna be able to get any sort of precision um, or uh, turn any harder metals. Again, this is a home gamer lathe, I understand that. But again, I want it to operate at its best of its abilities. So we're gonna disassemble this thing, every nut and bolt and spindle and everything and clean it up and get it rolling. I forgot to mention we are going to make one more modification to this lathe. As you can see here on the chart for the carriage feeds, the slowest carriage feed we can get is 4.2 thousandths of an inch and that's uh, per revolution of the spindle. And a lot of people online have said that that gives you a very poor surface finish and it almost looks like a very fine screw thread. So a lot of these people have modified by changing out one gear and they're able to cut that uh, feed rate in half down to 2.1. But there was another gentleman and I'll find his video and link it in the description who figured out by adding an additional set of gears you can cut that in half again which gets you down to about a thousandth of an inch per rotation of the head, uh, spindle which gets you a much better surface finish. So I have the parts on hand to do that. It's just a couple gears and I'll walk you through that when we get to that point. Sorry about the focus. Now that's the complete disassembly of the tailstock. Now I'm going to get all these parts in some degreaser and then after that we'll put them in a non-corrosive rust remover to get them all cleaned up and from there we'll be ready to move on to priming and painting.
going to wrap up part one of this video. I've completed restoring the tail stock and the whole cross side assembly. And in the next part, we'll get to on with removing the lead screw from the lathe and taking off the whole carriage and starting to restore that and maybe even get into the headstock and spindle assembly. So thanks again for watching and hope to see you again in part two.